Creatinine is a lab value you're going to see very often. It's run pretty much on every patient regardless of the condition they have because it allows us to determine renal function, okay? So let's talk about what creatinine is. First of all, the normal lab value is about 0.6 to 1.2, okay? And that will vary depending on male, female, and everything in hospital you're at, but basically it'd be about 0.6 to 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. So what is creatinine? All right, so creatinine is an end product of creatine metabolism, okay? So what is creatine? Creatine is basically resides in, in every skeletal muscle that we have, and we need creatine to carry out metabolic processes, metabolic reactions within our muscles. And what happens is every time we carry out one of the act these actions, a small portion of creatine is broken down and is converted to creatinine. And that creatinine then travels to the kidneys and is excreted in the urine, or at least should be. So the reason this is a great test of renal function is because we can determine is our are our are the kidneys getting rid of all the creatinine that is coming to it? Okay, so again, really quickly, we need we have creatine in our muscles to carry out metabolic processes and 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 make our muscles work. When our muscles work, they use up this creatine, and parts of it, portions of it, are converted and turned into creatinine. The creatinine goes to the kidneys, and the kidneys, depending on how well they're functioning, are able to filter that out and get rid of it through the urine. Creatinine is such a good lab for renal function because we always have a fairly consistent amount throughout our body, okay? Generally, it's not gonna spike up and down unless there's crushing injuries or trauma, uh, and we'll get into that more when we talk about uh, CK and stuff like that. It's a good lab because it, it, it remains fairly consistent throughout the body. So creatinine can be really good, first of all, for assessing renal function. Also, it can be really good in evaluating suspected muscle disorders if they're, if we don't see any sort of renal damage or renal disease. So situations where we would have elevated creatinine levels would be things like, first of all, renal disease, acute and chronic renal failure, rhabdomyolysis, which we'll talk about more when we talk about CK, uh, and then shock, acromegaly, congestive heart failure, dehydration. Okay, so we're going to see really elevated levels in these types of conditions, focusing primarily on our renal issues and then, you know, trauma and things like that. We would see decreased levels if we have inadequate protein intake, liver disease, uh, and decreased muscle mass, okay? And that can occur with age. So uh, elderly patients might have decreasing creatinine levels because as they age, they have less muscle mass. If a patient's creatinine level gets above about 50 milligrams per deciliter, that's really going to be considered a critical value. And at that moment, we might start considering dialysis, rather, you know, peritoneal dialysis or or... CVVHD or something like that to try to help get rid of this creatinine and, and, and get it back to more of a, a normal level. So for a regular healthy patient, uh, we're going to look for a creatinine level of about 0.6 to 1.2. Thank you for listening to our podcast today. Nursing.com is the trusted learning hub of all future nurses, your secret weapon for passing nursing school with your sanity intact. We want to invite all our listeners to visit us online and take advantage of a special promo offer. Just head over to nursing.com slash free. That's nursing.com forward slash F-R-E-E. -E, and check out the free resources and other goodies that we have there just for our podcast listeners. Until next time, go out and be your best self today. And as always, happy nursing. <laughs>